Hello and welcome to a tropical update from Cayman Hurricane Center. I'm Adam McDoom. Right, well, the Atlantic is finally kicking up an activity. Uh, we have two areas of interest out in the Atlantic. Invest Area 99L and Invest Area 90L. Uh, both areas has a fair chance of developing one a much higher chance of developing than the other but as time goes on both chances should increase as such we have area number one which is a vigorous tropical wave with a broad area of low pressure and it's producing large area cloudiness and showers few thunderstorms more than about 300 miles south southeast of the Cabo Verde or Cape Verde Islands. Environmental conditions are forecasted to be conducive for gradual development and a tropical depression is expected to form uh, by early next week over the eastern and central tropical Atlantic or a main development region. Um, as the system moves westwards at about 10 to 15 miles per hour, that area is this one right here, obviously. And then our second area, Invest 90L, which is more or less a tropical wave located along here. And this tropical wave is producing a large area of cloudiness and thunderstorms. And it's also uh, recently recorded gust of tropical storm force in squalls. Uh, anyway, conditions are expected to become uh, much more conducive to, for development as it continues towards the west, west, northwest. Um, and of course, areas uh, in the Caribbean need to monitor this. So uh, first and foremost, the ABC islands across here, uh, they will be impacted. Continuation of impacts here in the Lesser Antilles and parts of South America as it continues on towards the west to west northwest areas such as uh, possibly as far north as this southern southwestern coast of Haiti, Jamaica, Cayman Islands, western tip of Cuba, as far south as Honduras, Nicaragua, parts of northern Colombia, Venezuela. Uh, you guys should also be monitoring this. Anyway, general track should be off to the west, west northwest, more or less uh, kind of coming up along here as such. Um, with the one out here in the Atlantic, 99L should continue on a general westward track to maybe a slow west northwest. Uh, that too could be impacts to the Eastern Caribbean uh, coming up probably over a week time or so. Plenty of time to watch that as it develops on through. So let's go ahead and look at the wide view shot uh, of the Atlantic. And again, as you can see, this tropical wave here, a uh, very, very impressive tropical wave. One of the better looking tropical waves i'd say one of the best looking tropical waves we've seen uh so far this season there is somewhat of a bit of a sort of rotation going on within the wave here um so you know it is it is starting to get itself going and again big giant area of thunderstorms convection uh, no drier or Saharan dust to speak of, so very little impediments in the way. And also uh, very, very little shear. Matter of fact, it, it's been a long time since I've ever seen the whole entire Caribbean region as a whole having this amount of low sh wind shear, only in 5, 10 knots, give or take. And then overall here in the main development region as well, wind shear is low and should allow for this system here, which is um, 99L to continue to develop. That system already has a circulation and is spinning quite nicely. Uh, it's a big, big, a bit broad and convection is spread out. However, over time that should become better. So let's go a little bit closer into here. This is Invest 90L 
here in the Eastern Caribbean. So just to give you the exact particulars on uh, Invest 90L, it is located at 12.2 uh, North, 64.6 West, uh, which again, um, 12 to 64. Uh, six, which is more or less right along here. Or uh, let me make that a little bit more clear for you. That is located right about there. And again, this should continue on a uh, west to west northwest track as such um, here, and uh, will continue to develop further, especially as it pulls further and further away from the coastal regions of South America, uh, and that moisture could get in and wrap in more on the south side. So that should continue off towards the west. And again, uh, to add to that, pressures are relatively light at the time being, only in, uh, 10, 11 millibars, uh, and winds of about 30. Um, and again, with that tropical storm gust uh, occurring. And uh, for our other area, Invest 99, again, this system has a well organizing circulation developing in this system. Convection is quite decent. Um, and it is getting itself quickly organized. Uh, the particulars on that are uh, 10.2, uh, 20.9. So, in matter of fact, that would put it uh, at about this location here. Again, that is starting to wrap in towards uh, the system here. Again, very, very, uh, getting itself very much organized. And again, should become our next system. Um, so we'll have those two systems to worry about. In terms of intensity guidance uh, for this, I mean, I don't really like to jump too much into the intensity guidance much, but I said might as well throw it out there for you guys. Just give you a general idea. So this is the one in the Eastern Caribbean. And again, uh, this one's forecasted a pretty uh, quick intensification here, even some suggesting as much as hurricane. Uh, force uh, intensity going through uh, the next five days or so. In fact, um, yeah, so your five day mark is right about um, here. That is your five day mark. By this time here, should be somewhere within the Northwest Caribbean area and I will um, be back with a later update uh, this evening. I'll go into detail exactly why I am concerned about uh, when this system does get into that area as well as uh, for our other area of interest out in the East Atlantic why I'm also further worried about that. So that is the intensity guidance on the Caribbean system on the East Atlantic system. Uh, again, the intensity guidance is uh, fairly spread, but the general idea, tropical storm, possible hurricane going out into the future. Um, I do think that some of the models are kind of overdoing uh, the intensity a bit, uh, like the uh, HWRF, the GFS, the Canadian, they're sort of overdoing the intensity in the long run. Um, and even the GFS uh, and the HWRF to the uh, short term. Uh, I do think that in terms of intensity wise, like the uh, U UK Met and the NAVGEM and a few of the other models, they have a bit more of a steady intensification and I'll explain a little bit more on why I think that it'll be a uh, it'll be a steady increase in intensity rather than a rapid increase in intensity um, a little bit later with this evening's update. However, just to give you an idea, the Eastern Caribbean system is very large. Uh, it is 
really big in size and it takes a long time for these large systems to really ramp up. So that's one thing. The other thing is that it's uh, fairly far south, still tangled up in the uh, monsoon trough and intertrop conversion zone, so it needs to detach itself before it could really do any heavy ramping. Um, and also with its movement, uh, it's expected to be more of a uh, low rider, more southern track towards the Leeward Islands, um, not only because a bigger system will take a uh, longer time to get up and going, uh, and that it's tangled up still in the intertropical diversions and monsoon trough, but also there will be a high pressure ridge building uh, even more so that will help to push it on westwards. I'll have much more detail on that on this evening's update. I'll look forward to that um, at about uh, 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard or about uh, 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, I think that's about right. Yeah, so look out for that. I'll be back later this evening with an update on both of these systems. The threats for these two systems, where to look out for, and what, especially for our Invest 90 here, what are the impacts that have been occurring, and uh, what are we going to be seeing over the next five days. Right, that is it. For me, Adam McDoom for Cayman Hurricane Center, and I'll be back with you this evening.